The Sam Livecast is brought to you by Fixers Living. Check them out on the internet at fixersliving.com or love them on the Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Fixers Living. Kitchen, bath, outdoor, joy. That's what they do. Everybody, welcome to the Sam Livecast. It's Friday. It's the last day of bread week. What a week it's been. It's a good week, huh? Oh, hell yeah. That bread from Wednesday. Oh, I, my new thing now is I think I'm going to make a loaf a week and then just uh, have it for the whole week. But I don't, you're not, no, you're not going to have it for the whole week. You're right. Probably it's going to go fast. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem. We made that five minute beer bread. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It takes nothing. Three ingredients. Self-rising flour, sugar, and a bottle of beer. We use Newcastle. The problem is, you think you'll have it for the week. The problem is you're going to make it. It's going to come out of the oven. You're going to eat at least a third of it right there (laughs) because it's warm, because the butter goes on, because the butter melts in, because it's warm bread. And where do you get warm bread if you're not making it on a regular basis? And people don't make it on a regular basis because they believe it's a pain in the ass. And that's why those bread makers came out a bunch of years ago. It's extremely easy. It's right there on the cookingguy.com or on the samlivecast.com. Go check it out and all of our other recipes. Yeah. Everything we do is easy. But see, uh, that, what you talked about is, I think I, after the show finished, you, was, you said, can you imagine that on toast or just making oh, make, toast with that? Making just, toast out of that. Yeah, toasted with butter. Um, or French I toast. I could use that for a PBJ. I could of use that for French could. toast. Anything. Adam uh, and Emlyn were here from Vancouver visiting family. and um, Those are my, that's my cousin and his girlfriend. And uh, I made it for them and they freaked. And we were talking about making French toast out of it. And then we were talking about peanut butter and jelly. Mm. And then I said, have you guys ever made a grilled peanut butter and jelly? Oh, yeah. We did that here on the live cast. Revolutionary. They thought it sounded bizarre, but deli- do we have a picture of it? Yeah, we're pulling it up. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, not that you know far fetched, really. If you think about it, it's the first time. It's not when you think about it, but the first time you hear it, you're thinking it does seem a little weird because you think grilled cheese, grilled PBJ, like right. What? And then once the concept it, sinks in and you've actually had it. It's you can't believe that you've ever done it differently. Right. If you haven't, if you haven't, if you didn't watch the uh, the episode, it's it's simply a matter of putting peanut butter and jelly in the inside of some bread. Then you butter the outside and you cook it just like you were cooking a grilled cheese. Mm-hmm. It's retardedly delicious. Yes. Which is clearly not a word. No, probably Certainly not. It's probably not a correct good word, word to use right now. But, but it is what it <laughs> is. Stupidly delicious. Stupidly delicious. Uh, I ate at D Bar on Sunday. Nice. Sunday, while we were showing Adam and Emlyn San Diego, we went to Coronado. Loved it. They loved it over there. Lynn is still sick, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying. He not has. To he right has now. a Taiwanese plague. I'm getting mm. better. Clear. I don't know that you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting I still better. hear you coughing and hacking back there like paula dean <laughs> so we went to we went to coronado they loved it we came back we needed some lunch it was late it was about two maybe it wasn't maybe it was one and kelly said let's go to d bar in hillcrest and you you may remember that we had keegan gerhard on this show uh quite a while ago well, and keegan is the face and the voice of if you recognize him, he's the huge face and he's the huge face and voice of uh, Food Network's challenge. Or he was. I don't know that he's currently that. Yeah. No. But he has a restaurant in Denver called D Bar, and he opened up one here in San Diego, and it's down in Hillcrest. And I'm telling you, everything we had was completely delicious and solid. And the pr- his prices, I think he could charge more. Really? Honestly. I- I don't know, but I maybe I'm used to other restaurants' prices or something. But I had a burger. I had a I had a they call it a non burguesa, a hamburguesa, uh huh, which is Spanish for hamburger. for hamburger, but on non bread instead of the bun. Nice, right? oh, I love and there that. was Clever. black bean hummus on it. Holy crap! 
I think we're looking at some other uh, dishes from. We may be his other stuff. Like... That... Lynn, are these your pictures? Yeah. 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 So Lynn has done a ton of pictures for uh, Keegan. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. This is the, nice looking. their newest dessert. It's called like Sunshine on a Plate or something like that. Yeah. Ooh, cool. They, they don't usually mess around with names. They usually, you know, go go big or go home. Right. There. Yeah. But well, that was hey. beautiful. But I'm telling you, everything everybody had. And there's the thing there. It's called the simple salad. Do you have a picture of it, Lynn? Mm, is it one with the avocado or no? Yes. I'll try to find it. It's, it's a simple little green salad and avocado. What makes it is whatever this little simple dressing is. Kelly had it the first time we went there. We had it again. Both of us had it. Kelly and I shared one, and Adam and Emlyn shared one. So fucking good. Oops, sorry. I'm trying not to swear too much. Is so damn it? good. This is it, Chief? I, I don't know. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Wow, that's a pretty Look at looking it. salad. So, so I asked, I asked him salad. about it, and he basically, this is just what they eat. So why not put it on the menu? Because it's so darn good. Wow. Oh, that's what he eats. Yeah, I mean, he I asked him, like, how do you come up with the stuff on your menu? And he was like, well, some of the stuff, like the staples... Like the crew fries, like it basically fries with mac sauce on it and stuff, and like the salad, it's just yeah. stuff that they like to eat as Look at chefs. It. You know? Do Look we know it. what the dressing is that makes it? Please tell me. I have no idea. I'm no. sure he would tell you. I'm sure it's just it's I mean, real sure, simple. Here's the deal. I, a confident restaurant, you ask what the recipe is for something, mm -hmm. they'll give you pretty much any recipe they have. Yeah. Yes. Because they know, they understand that going out to a restaurant is not just about the food. It's about so many more things. It's about the ambience. It's about you not having to cook. It's about you relaxing. It's about you being in a different environment. It's about having somebody serve you. All these things. The insecure, shitty little restaurants. And you go, how do you make that? And they go, we're not going to tell you that. Even if it was just about food, regard, you know, not in including all those other factors, just having the recipe doesn't ensure that you're going to make it well and that it's going to be popular. It's exactly or right. It's going to be delicious, sure. good at all. No, that's exactly right. Yeah. All right, what are we getting into today? Uh, let's see. So this is not food related. I wrote this down, and ugh, you have to explain this to me. You two boys in there. All right. Okay. Here's Here what I wrote. It. Put it on us. Lay it on us. I don't. I don't believe in guns. I don't. Especially the the high the high rate shoot ones what are those called automatics like the automatics mm -hmm. i don't believe in those i don't know why people should have those mm -hmm. but if you want to have a gun for hunting that's fine or for self-protection that's fine i don't have a problem with that yeah i don't really think they should be here i think we'd be safer without them but but that's okay you want to have a gun have a gun here's what i don't get mm -hmm. why do the gun people oppose background checks how can a background check be taking away your rights? How can a background check be a bad thing? Somebody explain it to me. Go ahead. Chief? Uh, I, I can't really even take a stab at that because let's put it this way. I shot a gun. It was kind of fun. Yeah. But there were – I went with a friend, right? And he had some of his friends, and they brought some of their friends. Okay, right. So like three degrees of separation kind of, right? Right. Was I scared? Yeah. I didn't know the, the, the other friend's friends. I mean, like, you don't know who they are. You don't know, like... What about the other people who yeah, are... <laughs> you don't know if they hate Asian people. Like, you don't know if... Like, you have no idea, right? Yeah, it's, it's, you'd almost, it's almost surprising that there's not more, like, attacks at gun ranges. Okay, so nobody, nobody, right is tell, nobody is answering the question, why do the gun well, proponents oppose background checks? Because they look at the situation with... Um, gun restriction as yes. a zero sum game they see anything any anything that diminishes from the sell sale of guns yeah. or the exchange of guns yeah. or any of the gun culture in the u.s is a loss for them so they'll fight tooth and nail to prevent anything even if it's something that 90 percent of the public supports which they do for background checks right now you can go to a gun show and get a gun and there's there's zero no background, background check. check. No, you could be any, completely any deranged. Any whack job. You could be a three-time felon. You could be out of prison 16 minutes mm -hmm. and go to a gun show and buy a gun. Yes. Shouldn't there be a background check? I don't understand how they can oppose that. Surely they would argue that it doesn't make sense to put a gun in the hands of a whack job. Yeah. But then, see, yes, everybody can agree on that. But what they say is that it's going to unfairly infringe upon the people that aren't criminals 
No, it's not. I know. I uh, trust me. It's not going to infringe on any of those people. If you're completely sane and there's nothing in your history that says you shouldn't have a gun, you apply for a gun license, you get a gun. Exactly. Well, I think give them a gun. This is what I, after thinking about it a little more, this is what I think they might be opposed to. Where is the limit about who gets guns and who doesn't? Like, so if your background check, like, let's say you had a, you had a felon. Like years ago, like, right. you know, and they're like, that was like 10, 12 years ago. Like, I should be past that, but I still can't own a gun. What's going on? What did you No, but did see, you that's shop okay. That, it would be one thing. It'd be one thing if what they were arguing about was the way that the background checks are going to be instituted. But what they're arguing against is it's either background checks or no background checks. They're not saying that we support background checks based on these provisions. With limits, right? They're saying no background checks. It infringes upon the Second Amendment. <sighs> but I agree. There should be a discussion about. How they're done because it could unfairly, it, it, some people could be maybe excluded if there's too general a background check law, you know? There, if it, you got something in your history that says you shouldn't have a gun, then you shouldn't have a gun. You point, sh- don't argue with no, that. No, of course, but I'm just saying it's not I, black and white. There's no, not, the, there's that. obviously we have to come to an agreement. And you know, I feel like in our lifetime, guns will never be banned in the United States. No, no, no. I, I don't, I don't, I honestly feel that. Even like, you know, unfortunately, there's been so many tragedies like recently. I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime. I don't think it is going to happen and I don't think it should happen. But I do think that we mm. should have serious regulations on the industry way more than we have now. You know, I'll tell you this. I just heard this the other day. The the opposition to guns mm-hmm. uh, shortly after the Sandy Hook Elementary incident mm-hmm. was like here. Now we're, what, three months away, two yeah. months away? Uh-huh. It's now here. It's but, dropping. The further you get away from an ugly incident, uh, the less resistance people have to anything like that. President Obama. People just, have to remember that stuff. He, I know he did. He just said that we should be ashamed that we forgot it. So he's quickly. exactly right. We Connecticut should be actually, which is where Sandy Hook took, put, took place, they just recently passed uh, gun legislation that makes uh, Connecticut the strictest gun control state in the in the nation. And how that hasn't happened in, checks. in Colorado or any of these places that had this kind of stuff happen, I don't know. And that that guy from the uh, the Colorado movie theater shooting mm-hmm. tried to he would plead guilty for life in prison so that he wouldn't get the death penalty. So he wouldn't get the death penalty. <sighs> Please. Well, I know. I, the and they said that- no to that, like they should have. Like that was even a question for two seconds in anybody's mind. Yeah. Oh, maybe we shouldn't go through the expense of a trial. Go through the expense of a trial. Just kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. He should never get out, but he should be. Ah. I don't want to. I, I'm sorry I even started down this road. I get mad about it. Let me go back to. Uh, let me talk about Fixtures Living for a second. We love Fixtures Living. Yes, we do. Great sponsor of the show. Great friend of the show. And I talk about Fixtures Living. Here's what we say Does that look like an appliance store to you? No, it doesn't look like a plumbing and appliance store. That's an amazing store. That's their Costa Mesa store. Wait do you see what they do here in San Diego, their new store at UTC. But it's one thing for me to talk about Fixtures Living, it's another thing for somebody to email me. On the Facebook, private message me on the Facebook. And here's what, Kimber, what are you guys doing in there? I'm trying to drink my water so I don't cough. <laughs> These, the, the Fiji bottles, they, they do, that. they Sorry, make I'm, that noise. I'm like trying so hard not to I make noise. I think there's no way that you can't make noise with them. If, you if were just all over Lynn if about I had noise. To, if I had to come up with anything I didn't like about Fiji water bottles, it's that they're, they're noisy somehow. It's, I think all I think it's the that. best water, but whatever. So it's one thing for me to talk about Fixtures Living. It's another thing for Kimber Allison to write me this letter that reads, thank you so very much for the Fixtures Living promo. We finally got a chance to go there and order our appliances. Hmm. I picked the stove and dishwasher up yesterday and have the stove up and running. The dishwasher still in its box. Then it will get hooked up. Wow. From every aspect of our appliance shopping experience to the pickup, From the warehouse in Oceanside, it was made easy by the Fixtures Living staff. I had one slight hitch in the plan yesterday when U-Haul hooked up a trailer to my truck that had one ball tire. Uh Then I said, I think not. Then they tried to give me another of the same. The third trailer, much larger with four good tires, was finally attached at 445. The warehouse was going to close at 5. I called the San Diego store. They called Lawrence Bailey, who kept his crew there just for me. And my little one, so we could pick up our appliances. Wow. How's that? That's what they Thank do you, Kimber. Pictures. That's what it's all about. It doesn't even surprise me. It doesn't surprise you. No, it shouldn't. And that's, that's how the store was started. It was started because 
Jim Stewart was a customer of another appliance store. And the experience was so bad, he said, there's got to be a better way. He started his own store. There you go. We love you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. And I just want to hop over to Facebook really quickly mm. because uh, Tara mm. in Des Moines, Iowa, threw up her picture of the Scotch eggs and she said she made them for Easter breakfast. Oh, and they were boom. a huge hit. So Look at that. Thank you, Tara. We Fair. love it when you guys uh, throw together the recipes and then put them up on Facebook. But go nothing... back. She did a nice job she on did, this. She did, definitely. Let me see that picture again. There you go. That's really nice. Yeah. Again, like the me and probably everybody else did not even know you could bake scotch eggs mm -hmm. but it worked i read as i'm looking at those i read a recipe not a recipe i read i read a thing about i can't remember what it was they said the night before you're gonna hard boil eggs take them turn them upside down oh, yeah, yeah. in the package uh -huh. and the yolk will settle more in the center so when you hard boil them the yolk's right in the middle i don't know if that's i, true I wonder if that's even true I don't know if that's true, and I guess we could run the experiment. Um, and while we're talking about eggs really quickly, don't forget that you can go to the Bed Bath & Beyond blog. Above in, or blog.bedbathandbeyond.com and check out a cool video that we made for leftover hard-boiled egg recipes. They're awesome. So <laughs> look at, I look weird standing <laughs> there with two there. eggs in my hand, don't I? <laughs> Yeah. You look a little bit creepy. Uh -huh. Speaking of creepy, so I was at uh, Costco yesterday. I'm going to show you some pictures from there. Mm -hmm. But I had to renew our Costco card. And so I went to the, the membership desk and, and the, the girl's doing it for me. She had a beautiful smile. And so as she's in the middle of helping, we're talking. I said, you have a really beautiful smile. And I immediately followed up with, and I've been married for 28 years. And I'm saying that because I don't want you to think I'm creepy trying to hit on you because I'm not. <laughs> but the second I said, you have a beautiful smile, I felt like it was... It could have been. Is that a pickup line? Is um, it the beginning of a I think series? It all, de of it all lines? depends on how you say it. If you're going, hey, you got a beautiful smile. <laughs> there was no <laughs> alcohol go, involved. There was go, no. If you go, you know what? You have a beautiful smile. I'm just going to say that. That's completely. But I fine. think if I said it again tomorrow, I would still feel the need to say, hey, I've been married 28 years, and I just want you to know of I'm course. not creepy. Yeah. Because <laughs> I haven't married 28 years, and I'm not creepy. And I would say it if my wife was standing right there beside me. Yeah. Speaking of Costco, yeah, let's look at some pictures, shall we? Costco is just the best. So I've never, I've been to Costco for a while, so maybe I've missed this. I do like going there. This is a locked up case with high end alcohol in it. Wow. It's like the elite aisle. It's the elite aisle, right? I can zoom anywhere you want. No, no, no. Don't worry okay. about it. I got pictures. So oh, check wow. this out. Uh oh, these are seven hundred and fifty millimeter mil milliliter bottles, right? That's twenty. Five ounces. And that's a so handle, regular. Right? A handle. No, no, no. A handle is one point seven five oh. liters. Oh, so slightly more than two two point two five times this. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's it. So you go buy a regular bottle of vodka in a store, seven hundred fifty mils. A regular bottle of vodka could be anywhere from twenty to sixty bucks. Mm -hmm. This is seven hundred fifty mils of Remy Martin cognac for twenty two hundred dollars. Wow. Nice bottle. Yeah. Nice case. Louis the Eighth. Keep watching. The thirteenth. It goes up. Glenn Fittick. <laughs> what is that? Twenty four hundred dollar bottle. Yeah. How long is that aged? Uh, oh, I, I see a forty on the left. It's probably. Oh, that's 40 the forty years. Year. Sorry. Oh right. That is God. the forty year. Yeah. There you go. So you can see that you can see. I mean, yeah, you would definitely pay a lot for it, but twenty four hundred bucks and it's seven hundred fifty mils. How about this? How about $2,700 for Johnny Walker in a Baccarat crystal bottle? What? Uh, so I'm guessing, well, Johnny, uh, we know Johnny Walker has um, Johnny Blue Walker black, Blue Johnny Walker black, red, red, blue, green. And so is that pricey because it's got the most, the best scotch? Uh, I, I don't know it? what age, what color this would be. I can tell you this. Baccarat crystal is very expensive crystal. Yes. So I'm going to guess that most of that, I think, is is due to that. But this, if you read the thing, it also says it's uh, the decanter has a twenty is twenty four karat gold plated neck collar. Wow. wow. And the box is hand is handmade. It's a handmade box. Holy crap! But wait, don't stop there. <laughs> because there's the Hennessy bottle. Look at that. 
French cognac, twenty nine hundred dollars. Yeah, I got one of those at home. Is that insane? <laughs> That's my Tuesday the night. The bottle was beautiful. I just wanted to pick it up and hold it. You can't get into the case. Clearly. <laughs> but if you thought that $2,900 for a bottle of booze at Costco was as high as it gets, you'd be wrong. What? Because here's a $4,000 bottle of 50-year-old rum from Jamaica. Wow. That's got to be good, actually. Oh, I imagine oh, yeah. it's delicious. And what's that thing on the left? Is that a flask? No, the thing on the left, I think, I think. Looks like a cork. It's an instruction booklet. Is just a <laughs> booklet about it. Uh, oh, is that, maybe it's a special cork on the top left. And no, that's the, that's the cork that you take out after you take out yeah. the other one. Damn. Why you need two, I have no idea. Well, that with $4,000, you deserve to have hand two. Hand-blown glass. That is some cool shit. And I can't believe they have that at Costco. For three, for four grand, forget about the glass being blown. That's like specialty liquor. I can't believe they have that there. Right? Well, I, when, I can't. You wouldn't it's very expect specialty. To find, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect to find very that there. Very specialty. And I just made a joke that went over everybody's head oh i but didn't even never mind i won't even go back it's not oh. even it's not even worth it it was very funny in my own head <laughs> i do that like three times a show so no worries <laughs> can you believe that uh, yeah, I, I can't crazy. believe that that was the highest one that i saw nutty they got great prices on stuff you know what i bought i bought a 1.75 liter bottle of i'll show you Out. 1.75 liter bottle of nice gray goose and why did i buy that it was cheap it was 45 dollars. okay so that's a really good deal if you think if you, you think when i buy uh do you know what i know hmm. when you buy that you're essentially getting an extra an extra fifth of vodka for free an extra 750 mils of gray goose for free wasn't like three, isn't it? One, one of those is about is like, big. one of those is a little under 25 five. bucks. So if you buy two of those, it's about equal to one, but that thing is three. So the, the, the price was good yes. for this. And, and I'll admit that Grey Goose is not my favorite vodka in the planet. Yeah. But I bought it for this. <laughs> as stupid as it is. Oh, of course you would. Did that come with it? Yes. And two glasses that I didn't keep. I didn't want the weird glasses. I don't want like random glasses. I know. But I do have up there. A huge ass collection. This. I'll show you. Hold on. Nice. There you go. That is a large collection. It's a good, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's more on either side that you can't see. Uh-huh. Uh, but I like collecting those things. And my favorite ones yeah. are ones that come from booze makers. Because they have the labels on them? Because they have the labels on them, which are probably like the cheapest stupid ones ever. It's the ones I like. It's not about the... I could go to... It's about I the could, collection. It's about the collection. I could go to a bar store, like at a Crate and Barrel, and get all kinds of fancy shakers, mm -hmm. but I want the ones like this that have the Grey Goose logo on them, or wait. Maybe Wait, we should just host more. the show from over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm going to bring them. Look, the Southern Comfort one in the shape of a Southern Comfort bottle and a Chopin one in the shape of the Chopin bottle. Oh, those are cool. Those are the ones that I like. I should probably just find a liquor distributor that has these sitting in their warehouse that they've not been able to give away for 10 years. <laughs> I know. Hey, we, I'm sure we have some fans out there that will come across some of these and send them in. Well, let me know. Let me know. He's I'll, always open I, for gifts. I, I'll trade. We'll trade for books. Yes. I'll give you we'll a trade for Cooking books. Guy cookbook for your interesting <laughs> bottle, in, interesting alcohol uh, shaker bottles. <laughs> All right. It's time to hop in the kitchen. By the way, one last picture from uh, Costco. Yep. I stood and watched this guy for about five minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I love watching those guys. It's like going to the fair. They're yeah. really good, too. See how he was just about he was just about to tip the egg, the omelet that he had made right oh, out of the pan. Because it just slides. Let me guess. The, no, he didn't use any oil. It's non-stickability. No. Right. I don't think he used any oil. <laughs> uh, just about to jump into the kitchen before I do, just let me say, uh, weallof.com is the only purveyor of only California 
extra virgin certified olive oils that I know. You mm-hmm. can go to their store. You can go to their website. Which is brand new, by the way. Yeah, brand new website. Nice. I love the look of it. I think you should go to their store and do a little olive oil tasting. Olive oil is very personal. Whether you like one with a fruity finish or one with a little bit of a bitter uh, finish to it, it's up to you. But they will teach you about olive oil in their store the proper way. Mm-hmm. So you can find the olive oil that you like. And if you go to their website, weolive.com, you click on Shop Now, put my name, Sam, in, you'll get 10% off anything that you order. Yeah. Promo code SAM, 10% off everything we just love for them. Livecast viewers. Just for Livecast viewers. And now I'm ready to cook. All righty. Ready? Let's do it. Let's go. I completely forgot what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm <laughs> making, but I have a couple moves first. Okay, here's what we're making. Bread week, we're making a, a pear gorgonzola bread. Yeah. So good. Great little appetizer, make it, serve it with something. Just make it and have it by itself. I love mixing cheese and fruit. Oh, okay. So I've got this great, this, how do you, how do you say this? We talked about this. Pugliese? Pug, Pugliese. 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 This nice little artisan bread. Try and use something interesting. Uh, right here, I have some red onion with, I haven't done anything to it, but put a little butter and a little olive oil in here and a little salt. And I've softened it. You didn't need to, see, I'm gonna just warm it up again. You didn't really need to see that happen. Um, I'll have to cut this. I'm gonna try and just do the bottom layer if I can. That's a great big serrated knife. Yeah. <laughs> One of the three knives I think you need. Serrated chef's knife and a little baby knife. You want to uh, talk about that? No, no, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Now. I don't I'll mean right now. I'll talk about some. It's a whole <laughs> can of worms. It's a whole can of worms. Don't want to open up. All right, so a little olive oil on here. My oven is on to broil, right? So I'm warming those up. I've got some pears to cut, but I have to do this. I'm going to mix a combination of. Gorgonzola cheese. Lynn, do you know the difference between gorgonzola and blue cheese? I have no idea. Neither do I. <laughs> this recipe uh, is something that uh, our friends up the street, Peg and Matt Minotti, makes. And um, Peg turned me on to it years ago. She always uses gorgonzola. I want to be true to her recipe. So I, too, use gorgonzola. Are they similar, blue cheese yes, and gorgonzola? I think they're. I think they're both considered blue oh. cheeses, right? They're both blue cheeses, absolutely. You oh, can, okay. You can see the veins, the little blue veins in this. They smell the same. I feel like gorgonzola might be a little more mild, but I don't really know for I, sure. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so these red onions are now softened, doing their thing. So here's what this is. This is going to be a combination of blue cheese. I got to just. Don't want to overdo it. I'm sorry, gorgonzola and and softened butter. So watch how this works. Just put a chunk of butter in here. According to this website I found, yeah. blue cheese is a genre and gorgonzola is a type. So there's like Stilton, oh. there's Roquefort. There's oh. Like, yeah. oh, I get it, okay. So I'm just gonna give this a quick little zap. Just to melt the butter a bit. Only a few seconds. <laughs> Don't go away. Five, four, three, two, one. I want to go to 45, 15 seconds. Boom, done. Okay. So now I can take this butter and mix it with this gorgonzola, right? Okay, that's good. The onions are ready. Pears. Did I say pears? You did. Because I meant pears. I had three pears here. <laughs> oh, Max ate Oops. one of my pears. <laughs> what? Oops. Unbelievable. I don't think we've ever cooked with pears on the live cast. I was not <laughs> expecting them to be a well, part of the recipe. Well, we're certainly not cooking with three pears today, are <laughs> <Good> we? Good thing. <laughs> my bad. Jeez. All right, so here's what I want to do. It was good. It's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, 
I just want slices. Oh, got a niche. Hold on. I'll try and use like the whole ish. Pears are great because they've got a lot of meat on them. Oh, I'll tell you something. These pears are so perfectly ripe. Oh, yeah. They're soft and sweet and perfect. Really delicious right now. And I think probably I should. So the goal of this whole thing is simple. All right. Let's see if this is enough. So red onions go down first, right? Nice. There is something about, about caramelized red onion. And if caramelizing onions just means you cook them slow enough in the pan that you let a bunch of the natural sugars come out, present themselves, sweeten up the whole thing, and they're just so delicious. Okay, right. So we got red onion here, right? Nice. And when you do something like this, try and get onion or whatever it is all the way to the ends. So every bite has a little bit of something in it. Now we're going to try and do these guys. Mm. You know the All beauty right. of it. You're just slow. Yeah. I, oh, I meant to tell you. What? Try to uh, talk through what you're doing. Okay. I'm just taking the slices, thin slices of this, of the pear, and putting it on top of the onions on this uh, bread. I just want a little coverage of everything here. This will be beautiful. I don't want it too thick. I want people to be able to eat this nicely, but you know, you got to cover it up. It's all beautiful. We good? Yep. Okay. I think that's nice. Okay. Now some of this. Does gorgonzola melt like a normal cheese or not? Uh, and it melts a little bit less, but the, now the problem is, I gotta remember, I, I always remember this is kind of a hassle. This oh, part? Putting it on top, yeah. Yeah. You just wanna spread it out a little bit. Oops, come on guys. Come on, you know, everybody cooperate with me. I don't remember how Peg does this. I'm sure she's got a much more delicate system than I do, but. It doesn't matter. So now I've got this pear. Uh, I've got a layer of the pears, and now we're just trying to put some of this gorgonzola butter over the top. My oven's on to broil. Oh, my God. You can just see how wrong this is going to be already. I mean, wrong in a very positive <laughs> sort of way, though, right? Right. Yeah. It's going to be melty. It's going to be gooey. It's going to be tremendous. It's going to be sweet and salty. Uh, oh, my God. I think that's it. Well, I feel like there's one spot here that needs some of this. One more here. One more here. Just the right amount, right? Oh my God. <laughs> just let me say, just by itself, gorgonzola butter. Wow. Okay, this guy's going to go in here. A little bit of foil. There we go. Because it's going to come off the edge and it's going to be messy. My oven's on to broil. That means the top down heat. I don't want it too close. And I'm going to just watch this. While I clean up, it should take just a few minutes to take care of that. Yeah, this is not something you want to forget in the oven. No. This is not something that you want to forget in the oven. God, pears are good. I've forgotten how good pears are. You know what else I forgot? I forgot that while well, we're talking about those bottles of uh, alcohol at Costco, I remember seeing three years ago, you could buy a barrel, 240 750 milliliter bottles of Jack Daniels. What? At Costco. <laughs> that you took the little piece of paper off and you paid for it and then they, I think they shipped it to you in bottle form. I don't really remember wow. how it worked. It was, I think, seven grand. 
somewhere between five and seven grand. Hang on, we got a picture of it. You ready for this? Yeah, let's see what that looks like. Let's see, let me zoom in on it real quick. But that's a lifetime supply. What's that number say? Can we get uh, closer? That says, oh, 8,500 bucks. So that's probably recent. Yeah, that's pretty cool, I would say. Can you imagine 240 bottles? That's a cool thing if you have a bunch of friends. A lot of friends. Um, <laughs> well, even if you got 60 bottles, right? If four of you went in and you got 60 bottles, well, I can smell this already. I know. Oh, wow. Wow, it's already doing its thing. Hold on, I'm just gonna move it down one. I feel like it was too high. Holy smokes, that thing is almost ready. This is gonna be so good. Here's what I like about the live cast. I mean, there's a lot of things I like about it, but I like that the stuff we do here, we do live. Okay, so the bread, the five minute bread I had to get going because it takes almost an hour to cook. But we showed you. We want you to know how these things happen. We want you to know that you can do this stuff yourself at home. It's easy enough for an idiot like me to do this stuff here on camera, talking, having, uh, hosting a show. You can totally do this at home. And since it's start to finish, mm -hmm. you don't, there's no like off camera stuff that you don't know about. You yeah, guys get to like see we're every single thing. By the way, uh, 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 Monday, uh, we have the new Mantry here. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to make something out of the Mantry box. I'm not going to tell Max or Lynn. Mm. You'll have to try and figure it out as we go through the box. And if you don't know what a Mantry is, stay tuned on Monday and you'll find out. Here's it's a one of our favorite things. Okay, here you go. Wow. Check this out. Wow. Wow. How beautiful is that? So I'll take this guy and I'm going to put him right here. You got a powerful boiler there. And then I'm going to, yeah, I know. That's a really crazy. powerful boiler, right? And now I'm just going to cut. So let's do this. So there's the layers of what you've got Jeez. inside, right? You got the gorgonzola, you got the pear, you've got the onions. Wow. This is going to be stupid hot, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Is this, gonna, is this a mistake? Yeah, probably. It's okay. <laughs> I can't got a nice good. up close and personal shot for that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Onion first. Mm. The saltiness of the gorgonzola comes in next. And then just like the the richness of the butter helps this whole <laughs> no. Oh my god, it's so good. I want you to make this. Mm. Bread week. What's not to like? Once again, if you're on a no-carb diet, <laughs> you probably hate bread week. But when you're off your, your no-carb diet, you're going to love us for making this stuff. The focaccia bread, the five-minute beer bread, and now this pear gorgonzola. Oh, yeah. Nonsense. It's so delicious. Go to thesamlivecast.com to see all those old recipes. Mm. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tell your friends. Subscribe on iTunes. We'll see you Monday for the opening of the mantry. Thanks for being here, bye.